Welcome to The Way. My name is Kiyoshi Henry Graves. I'm an eighth degree black belt in Shotokan Karate. Today we'll be talking about the martial arts and how it's evolving into something that some of us recognize and some of us don't recognize. Today's guest will be Sensei Nate Wooten. How you doing, Sensei? Pretty well. How are you doing today? Very good. Doma gato. Gazanamas. Yes. Yes. Um, one of the questions I've been wanting to ask you is, how do you feel about the martial arts today? Well, the martial arts is doing pretty well at this time. Everything is growing, and it's because of a lot of the interest with people looking into mixed martial arts and uh, other forms of exercise at this time. People are looking for more ways to express themselves. Okay. Well, as you see this expression, do you think that the people coming into martial arts are looking for self-defense, or are they looking for health, or are they looking for just to get in shape, or what do you think is the most driving point with this? Honestly, I think it's all of the above, plus people are just looking for excitement. People are looking for different things to do, and the martial arts definitely has a lot of different facets that can keep people interested for quite a long time. All right, can we um, learn a little bit about yourself and your martial arts style? What system do you practice? Well, I'm, I practice currently Kenpo Mudaquan. Kenpo Mudaquan uh, comes from Tang Sudo and from uh, Subakdo. Subakdo was a, a more ancient form, which broke off into Tang Sudo and Taekwondo. From there, uh, in my opinion, Taekwondo leaned a little more towards sports. Tang Sudo leaned a little more towards self-defense. Okay. And would you consider yourself more on the self-defense part of that or more on the sports part of that? Definitely on the self-defense part. Okay. So in your school, do you offer um, instruction for children only, for adults, or a mixture? Well, we start from age three, and uh, currently I think my oldest student is about 68. So we cover the entire spectrum. At age three, we start with a program called the Little Dragons. Basically, it just gives the three to five-year-olds a good foundation to start with. They learn about self-control, they learn about discipline, they learn about balance, coordination, and following directions. Okay, what are the, one of the things have you seen that change in the martial arts since you started? <laughs> there have been so many changes in the martial arts. When I first started, everything was about discipline, discipline, discipline. Uh, everything was very rigid. You didn't move until a sensei told you to. You didn't punch, you didn't kick. Now with so many different styles of martial arts and some of them being not formal at all, it's changed so vastly. Uh, we have a lot of martial arts where they just have no formal direction. They come in, they throw punches, they kick, but they really don't answer to anyone. They don't wear any belts. It's a little different. Well, um, when you say formal, are you talking about traditional, eclectic, or what do you, what do you mean? I mean traditional. Um, now, my art is not traditional per se. We're not Okinawan, we're not Japanese. However, we are a little more formal than, say, some of the mixed martial artists or some of the newer practitioners of some of these up-and-coming martial arts. Okay. Well, in my experience with the martial arts, I've seen a lot of different artists come into it only to get this black belt, whether they were very good or they were so-so, they all, they like, they want to get that black belt, you know? Do you find people coming in wanting to be just black belts without earning the black belt? Absolutely. Everyone comes in with a sort of what we call, and you, you know it, of it, of course, the, the McDojo attitude. Okay. Uh, you know, you go into some karate schools that we call McDojos, and they're called that because there's over two million black belts sold. Uh, we don't believe in that. We believe in actually earning your belt. As a matter of fact, if anyone complained about anything having to do with the belt in our system, it's probably that we don't promote quickly enough. We make sure that everyone goes through each stage that they're, they're supposed to. Um, are you guys, um, like in my dojo, we teach kata. We do kata, we do um, weapons, kabuto, um, and we do the self-defense also. Now, do you find in your dojo certain students that like to do more weapons, like to do more kata, or like to spar? Well, absolutely. Everyone's going to have their preference, and some lean, I mean, way towards one end of the spectrum or the other. However, to be a well-rounded martial artist, they actually have to use each and every portion of the art. Uh, they have to learn katas, whether they like it or not. Yes, katas are repetitive. They are. Uh, I've been doing the same kata since I was 12 years old. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> but it helps you. It helps you grow as an artist. I understand that. Now, myself, I've been involved in the martial arts for 52 years now. Traveled all over the world and done a lot of different things. Oh, one of the people that really impressed me in the martial arts was Bruce Lee. Yes. And I think when I 
first seen how this man operates. I wanted to be just like him. And I started as early as the Green Hornet when he was Cato. And from that point on, I had this, I want to be a, a martial artist attitude. A lot of my people that started with me, they didn't finish. You know, um, the Japanese have a saying, fall down seven, get up eight. Every time we fall down, we get back up. Um, I try to teach that in my classes. Do you find that children get discouraged and what is one of the ways you motivate them to stay in the art? Well, we motivate them by trying to keep it exciting. As I said before, there is a lot of repetition, but if you can do the same thing in different ways, and when you can do that, it keeps the child interested. And it's not only children, by the way, that get discouraged. A lot of adults do. Adults come in and they think because they're older and they have a better understanding of what we're trying to explain to them, that they should pick it up a lot quicker and that they should progress twice or three times as fast as a child. It's not necessarily true. Um, it takes the time that it takes. Okay. Well. I, um, I've been to a lot of dojos also, and some of them have certain styles that they're known for. Are you guys known for punching, or you're known for kicking, or you're known for throwing, or, you know, somebody have, you know, like, it used to be a secret thing, a roundhouse kick, it used to be a really big secret. Nobody really got to learn the roundhouse kick until they got a certain level. Do you hold any of your students back, or do you consider that holding them back, or waiting for them to progress to that level? Well. I wouldn't say that we keep any secrets, but we try to discourage them from doing things that are beyond their current level. Because if you allow a student to, they will come in and try to learn every black belt form, every black belt kick and technique that they can, and they're a white belt. Meanwhile, what's lacking is their basics, the fundamentals. Everyone has to just start with the basics and fundamentals and slowly work your way up to the black belt. And as you know, and a lot of people a lot of other people know. Mm -hmm. Becoming a black belt doesn't mean you're finished. It's not a, some kind of magic finish. Oh, oh you mean getting your black belt isn't the end? <laughs> no, not by a okay. long shot. That's where a lot of us say you only begin to learn. Okay, okay. well that's very good. Um, I have been around also and seen people come out of it, want to break boards, you know, things like that, like um, breaking block. Is that a something you have to do to be a black belt or is it something <laughs> you do to just test your manhood or something like that? Well, it all depends on the system. Some systems require that even to go from a white belt to the next belt in their system, you have to break a board. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I hate to do it, but I have to quote Mr. Miyagi, wood doesn't fight back. Okay. <laughs> and no, I've I never seen know. a board pick a fight either. And I've never been attacked by a tree. Okay. Say, Nate, I would like to ask, ask you a question. Who is your instructor? How long have you been with him? Uh, my instructor currently is Hanshi Jerry Mikado. Uh, I've been with him since 2006, and uh, the man's 78 years old wow. and still flings me around, makes me cry like a little girl whenever he wants. Okay, okay. And um, Hunchy Jerry McCardo, has he been in the martial arts a very long time himself? He's been teaching for over 58 years. Wow. So, wow. A very experienced, a very knowledgeable man. Uh, one of the other questions that seem to be coming up today is the subject of bullying. And, and uh, they got something called cyberbullying, which I never had to deal with. And um, now they got um, you know regular bullying in the schools. How do you, a parent, come to you? And I want to know, my son is being bullied, my daughter's being bullied. You're a karate instructor. I want her to learn how to beat people up. What are your answer to those questions when they come in action? Well, first of all, I have to say I hate bullies of every type. It doesn't matter if it's a cyber bully, a, a virtual bully, a bully in person. A bully is a bully is a bully. I hate bullies. Uh, usually we try to teach our students to go at it head on. First of all, you have to go directly to the bully and tell them, listen, this is not right. I'm not appreciating the way I'm being treated. I'm not going to stand up for this. They also have to back it up by going to th their um, teachers, their administrators, parents, anyone that they can explain it to besides, you know, coming right. to us. Um, one of the things that in my dojo, I had a parent come to me and wanted to bring her little girl to me for being bullied. And the first thing I told her was, Mom, what is your idea of bullying and what do you want her to do when she's being bullied? Of course, the first thing she said is to me, I, don't want, I want her to stand up for herself. I said, well, you have to realize a couple things. When we were coming up, it was okay to fight. These days, these kids get suspended even for protecting themselves. So whatever thing that you're looking for, one of the things I like to also say is we need to educate the bullies about what they're doing so that maybe they won't do it. And most people that bully have been bullied. I've, I've learned that myself, that a lot of people that 
bully people are people who've been bullied themselves. So with that in mind, we're teaching them how to defend themselves. We're teaching them how to disengage from the subject or things like that and move away and always go to an adult, correct? Okay. Ask an adult, whether it's the police officer, the resource officer, a janitor, the, the lady cooking the meals or feeding the meals. Just go to an adult, adult, let an adult know that you know this is happening. And the other kids around, I think we want them to know about also helping out in that situation. So um, do you have a lot of students come to you for that, to learn about? Well, we don't because we see, we try to cover it in daily classes. Okay. I mean, you already know our motto in our school is respect all, fear none. Mm -hmm. The more that people learn to respect each other, the less they'll be bullying. Because, um, <laughs> you know, the, the oddest thing I've ever learned, or the oddest lesson I've ever learned, was actually from someone who was homeless. And he told me that uh, everyone needs to be punched in the face once in their life. Hmm? Now, <laughs> I know it sounds a little odd, but think about this. If you're punched in your face, you learn a couple of lessons from it. Number one, you learn the healthy respect of being hit in the face. You learn, I don't want to do that to someone else because I know what it feels like. At the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, the child who would be a little more timid, who might get punched in the face, uh, they learn not to have such a fear of physical action or physical interaction. Now, I'm not saying that everyone should go around punching each other in the face. I mean, it's more metaphorical. What I'm saying is you have to learn not to fear things. Experience life, experience situations. When you have um, a situation like that with someone bullying you, like I said, head on. Go straight to them. I don't appreciate this. This is going to stop. Is it going to stop this the easy way, this way, or is it going to stop the hard way? Either way, it's going to stop. Well, it's a, that's a good philosophy. <laughs> it's a different philosophy, and, and probably some people would be more passive about it. Some people would be more aggressive about it. I, and I just look at it as um, we got to resolve it, like you said. there got to be a resolution to the bullying problem. Respect. Re respect. Mutual yes. respect. Respect. All right. Thank you, sir. Hey, come on. And in just a few minutes, we'll be having Lenore Wooten coming up, and we'll be talking with her as the next guest. Welcome back. We have with us Lenora Wooten. How you doing, Ms. Wooten? I'm good, and you? Very good. And could you tell me, where's your current name? The Princess Blackwell. Oh, well, how long have you been doing martial arts? I've been doing it for eight years now. And do you really like it, or it's just a hobby? Are you going to stop it and keep it? I love it, actually, and I, I will keep on going. I, ha I feel like I have to get my black belt in further. Oh, great, great. Um, do you do any kind of competitions? Um, currently, no. But in the past, I have done plenty of local competitions. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, I've actually done Tournament of Champions. I've done Kick USA also. Um, they're all local, but Kick USA is more international people come from all over the world. There's more, there's more people. Okay. Um, now, personally, you've been saying you've been here for eight years now? Yes. And you heard that uh, our friends back then, right? Yes. And what do that mean when you come into a dojo? Do you get to teach classes or, or are you still just there learning? Do you help, help out in the dojo or do you just keep training yourself? You, there's always room for training. You, you're always learning, no matter what rank you are. Um, but I do still take classes and I do also teach. I, I help out with um, the beginners and the intermediates and such like that. Um, it's just like any other black belt would do. I'm just in the back a little bit. See martial arts today opposed to like I know you've been doing seven years, but at your age group, how do you perceive martial arts as far as like the women in martial arts? Is it something you think that would be very good for women to do or good for everybody to do? How do you think about martial arts? Um, in the part of women, I think it's very good for women to always do because there's always someone who has some kind of conflict at home or you know, some type of abuse or anything like that. I hear a lot about stuff like that. And we have, um, when we do women's self-defense class, we have a lot of women in there who are actually victims themselves, who are uh, part of this. And um, I think it's just good for every age, for little kids from three and any age that you can, 100. If you can still move, if you can walk, and walk into the dojo, it's good for you. Okay, now, with your short period of being in the martial arts, have you seen any drastic changes in the way a person come into the dojo or do the martial arts or a trend? Actually, yes, when I started, um, 
It was more about discipline and you have to stay still and you have to do this. And if you move, there was some type of there was some type of um, conflict if you moved. And it, now it's like a lot of kids are more, you know, all over the place, a little jumpy here and there, and there's less focus. Then there's a lot more focus you had to focus. Now there's a little more leeway with some martial arts, um, but it's still a learning process and it's still growing, and I feel like um, kids will learn. They'll get there eventually. It's just not as fast. Okay. Now, um, have you ever competed against men? I actually have, yes. I've done exhibitions. You've done exhibitions against men? Yes. Okay, and, and um, like say, um, what would that be, more fighting or more kata or more self-defense or whatever? So you're fought with different men. A lot, well, that's very commendable because a lot of times I see people go into martial arts, they're all about getting the, the first place trophy without competing. Oh, you won because nobody was there. So you said if you were at a tournament, there was no one there in your age group to fight with, you would move up. And if it had to be a man or an older black belt or you know, more experienced black belt, I should say, you, you wouldn't mind getting in the mix the So it goes a lot to say about your teaching, about your strength, how you feel do you uh, contribute that to your martial arts training, or is it just something that comes from the parents, or something that's inside of you? Well, let me ask you a question that's maybe a little bit off. So, what do you feel is your strength and what do you feel is your weakness? Welcome back. We're here with Lenore Wooden and her father, Nate Wooden. They were going to be demonstrating three different techniques and self-defense techniques. And so I'm going to step aside and let them um, do them. The first one's going to be a choke. The second one's going to be from a lapel. And the third one's going to be from a wrist. So, hey, come on. This first technique would be from a choke. <laughs> Okay. The second technique would be a lapel grab in one hand, lapel grab. And the third one would be a wrist grab. Thank you to Lenora Wooden. Thank you to Nate Wooden. Since they Nate Wooden. Us. Us. And thank you, audience, for To The Way. And I'd like to welcome you guys for our next visit to The Way television webinar. Don't mind that, because I don't know. Us.